Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to an episode of Career Mode and we're wrapping up Season 3. Look at this, we're taking a look through our calendar. We have our final game on our hands here up against Fulham, away from home. Hopefully we can end it on a high but you guys will just have to wait and see on how it all pans out. But uh, yeah, so this season, oh damn, like it's been pretty intense, there's no doubt about it. And um, whether I win or lose against Fulham, I'm pretty much guaranteed a fourth place spot, I'm pretty sure. Don't think Arsenal have enough points that even if they get three, they will uh, take over my fourth place spot, which is quite fortunate. But uh, yeah, so really, really happy with the way this season went. Let me know what you guys, uh, how you guys thought I did. I mean, I essentially think I did the best I could. Maybe I could have... Um, placed a little bit higher in the league uh, if but, I mean fourth place was my aim and so I'm kind of chuffed I got there um, You know the players that I brought in the, and the ones that have developed have been really good um, Oh Shirawe has come on really well. I mean, I believe this is uh, he, he's been with us for about a season and a half now I think um, and you also have Muriel who's been with us for quite a while now um, Adrian who's been with us for a while and a lot of people actually said Adrian was uh, a player to go on to be a really highly rated player um, In the game for me. He really hasn't been but then again I haven't been starting him every game so that could be a little bit why um, at the moment He's only rated 80 for me or 81 or so, maybe a little bit higher than that, but I am certainly not, uh, you know, the 86, 87 I was kind of hoping he would reach. But that's, uh, I suppose that's understandable because obviously um, he hasn't been starting every game. He doesn't get to play every single game. But one thing I have noticed a lot, and uh, don't get me wrong, this isn't me bashing on Muriel or anything like that. Um, but this is that Muriel hasn't been progressing past that 88 rated stage. Um, you know, he was 87 for an absolute age, like a very long time. Um, I then decided, you know, you know, I just assumed, you know, he'd stay around the 87. He did creep up to 88, but I can't imagine him going on to become any higher rated. So that does mean, um, I suppose you could you say, you know, he's at his peak and I can't wait for next season to see what he can do for the team. You know, assuming he stays, I mean, we still got the transfer window, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of offers come in, but there's no way I am selling Muriel unless he goes for something like 60 to 70 million. I mean, what sort of price tag would you guys put on him? Let me know. Um, I am interested. I'm talking about pounds as well, so euros is obviously a little bit more and dollars is almost around twice the value in case you're from anywhere else and you don't really understand the British currency. Um, you know, so... Um, I, I, you know, I'd be willing to sell him uh, uh, for about 60 million pounds. That would be the sort of region I'd be looking at. And I feel as though that's a sort of fair assessment. That's about um, almost about 100 million dollars and about 70 to 80 uh, million euros or something like that. Anyway, so uh, I reckon I'd sell him for that. El Shirawe, I just don't, I wouldn't sell for the reason that he has still got a lot more in him. But uh, don't get me wrong, guys. Just because I'm willing to sell Muriel for that sort of money doesn't mean I'm looking to do it. Um, it'll, it'll only ever happen if, you know, um, a, a club goes in and decides to pay for it. I never actually put him up uh, for transfer. As you guys can see, um, Muriel's contract was actually almost running out. He, uh, run out. Sorry, he had two months left. So I decided to seal him up for another three years to see what he could do. And uh, not to mention, um, it was important that I signed him up to another contract. Otherwise, he'd be leaving to another club um, for pretty much an absolute fraction of the price that he would have done or what he's actually worth to me and the club. Um, another guy was Green. And you guys might be wondering, Cal, why would you renew Green? Uh, contract, you know, he's not um, a, a particular uh, goalkeeper that you look in a play often, but he is just a very solid player to keep behind the lines anyone that needs to come in or, uh, you know, if um, uh, the current keeper is, you know, tired, injured, whatever, then he can step in and he does the job, you know, he's nothing really that amazing, but um, yeah, he, he does the job and he is on around like 20,000 a week now, uh, which is quite a bit, I suppose, for a keeper of that quality, but uh, he's just, he's good and he's done and he's done well for the team, so uh, that's him accepted that Muriel also accepted his contract extension and I'm really excited to to see what happens this transfer window. Let me know guys in the comments if you could if I could get one player what would it be? Also, let me know. Do you think I should sell anyone? Do you think I should? Uh, who do you think I should buy? All this sort of stuff. We always have this sort of discussion every time before a transfer window, and I really want to know. Um, Gaeta there actually came to me and was like, "I want more money." 
I need money to pay for my hookers and strippers at my house, so could you please give me a bump? I'm training hard and all this stuff, and in all honesty, he has done very well for me this season. He's come along very nicely as a player, and so I decided, yeah, why not give him a sort of contract extension and uh, bump up his salary per week. He was looking for 60, and so I was like, why not um, just put him on 60? You know, it's not that much of a bump up. It's 10,000, and uh, although that's a lot of money to you and me, uh, probably not a lot when you're already on 50k, but um, it seemed to keep him pretty happy, and that was what was in important but we are finally here at the end of the season the season is over they decided to assess my performance um, they were really happy um, about the way I did with my domestic cup because obviously I won the FA Cup my uh, Euro League was great obviously I beat Newcastle in the final to win that as well so those are two pieces of silverware and uh, I qualified for the Champions League which is also what they were looking for which is just magnificent really happy with that the team is shaping up very very well and obviously we're going through the loading screen shenanigans here but Joel Dross uh, who plays for Toronto FC. What do you guys think to the sort of players EA are kind of bigging up? So here they're bigging up Joel Dro Dross. Sorry, I don't know if that's how you say it. But uh, he's obviously a generated player or someone without a face. And they say, you know, he's looking to become a really big deal. Uh, same with uh, Antonio's... Gog and Emilio or something crazy like that. Um, they kind of make him out to be as if he's going to be the next big thing or something like that. So do you guys think I should go ahead and pick up the players that EA recommended to me there or should I kind of just do my own thing? But like I said, guys, I would always really appreciate your input uh, input on who I, who I should buy, who I should sell, all these sort of things. But keep in mind the ages of players. I am now into my fourth season, so players will be four years older and uh, that sort of thing. So the likes of Ronaldo, I'm not going to be purchasing. Likes of Messi, I'm not really that interested in but uh uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. And now the board have come back to me and said, I want you to win this, 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 and this. And most importantly, they want me to win the Premier League. And that is an absolutely massive, massive ask uh, for me to win the Premier League. I think it's possible. I really do because um, last season was quite close. You know, we came in fourth place. Um, and I do feel as though I can definitely challenge for the title. But uh, it's going to require me to bring in some, uh, some big players. But also on my mind was like, what if there's another job out there? I did go and check out the browse jobs because I was just interested to see what was around. You know, if there's a big club out there, I may have, uh, you know, gone to them and approached them, but um, I certainly wasn't uh, going to leave at QPR that easily. Um, also, there, Barcelona offered 30 million for him. I just went back and was like, 70 million or get the fuck out. <laughs> that was pretty much how it went, as well as there was another offer that came in from Muriel as well. Same with Lovren, actually. Um, the PSG offered... Um, 10.5 million for Lovren, and I was like, no, I, I, I don't think so. I d especially after me selling a Kurt Zuma for 19 million, I decided to stick him up for 25 million and see what would happen. And uh, as well as, I believe there was another offer there for Muriel, but um, you guys have to wait until next episode to see what happens, see if I bring in any players who I chase down first, but it's all down to you guys. Let me know who you guys would like to see in my squad. Have a cracking day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.